I'm Steve for This Up With Cars, and today I have a 1948 MGTC. This car was built in March of 1948, and it has been off the road since 1986. This car is in exactly the kind of barn find condition that I like to find. So today, let's see how far we can get to making it run without using any new parts. There are some interesting things on this car, so let's take a look at it real quick. Here on the front we have some badges. On the badge bar we have the MG Car Club and then the Abingdon Rough Riders. And then we have the Touring Club of Belgium with the French spelling of Belgium. So did this car spend time in Belgium or England? Possibly. Someone can probably tell me what country this plate is from. Coming around the side of the car, the tires are very old, they're cracking. Not safe to drive on. In fact, this is an old Sears Allstate tire. These might even have been ordered out of the catalog. It's amazing that they are still holding air. The paint on this car looks very good. I don't think there's any reason to restore this car. I'm guessing that the original interior of this car was a biscuit color and that the seats have been recovered at some point. The convertible top looks more original but I think it might have been replaced at some point as well. Moving around the rear of the car, unfortunately there are some non-standard lights that have been added here and here. We can see the old California plate with the last sticker being 1984 on it. This car also has some interesting dash plaques on it. Here is one, the Concorde d'Elegance of Lafayette, 1978. And then we have a Goff West badge from 1976. An antique classic car show badge from 1974. And then again, a badge from Concorde de Elegance de Lafayette, this time from 1971. Which means that the owner of this car in the 70s was really into cars because I don't think Concorde events like that were very popular here at that time. The odometer shows just over 19,000 miles and everything is in place and in pretty good condition. We do have an aftermarket Desmo mirror on the side. These were made in Birmingham. But besides the mirror and the lights, this car is in very good original condition, at least as far as we can see right now. Let's take a look under the bonnet and see what we're dealing with. On this side, everything looks pretty complete, except that the radiator hoses are not connected. You can see how much antifreeze has dried up and gummed up the cooling system. Take a look at this pipe coming off the water pump. And there's one of the pipes to the radiator. So obviously the cooling system will need to be flushed or this car is definitely going to overheat. But we have a lot of problems to overcome until we need to deal with that. I just noticed that there's a hole right here. So I am suspecting that someone installed a heater in this car at one point, and then it was removed later. If we look underneath the dashboard, you can see those holes there. And I think those two large holes is where hoses running to a heater core were. But the entire heater element and fan have been removed now. On this side, everything looks just as good as it did on the other side. The spark plugs have already been removed. I do know that a family member of the person who owned this car took those spark plugs out pretty recently and put oil in there. I don't know if they ever tried to turn the engine over or not, but I think the place to start is to get the boroscope out and look down inside the cylinders and see what condition they're in. I have my test long boroscope. Let's take a look in each cylinder, see what the pistons and the cylinder walls look like. This is cylinder one. Actually, it looks pretty good. Top of the piston looks pretty good. There is, of course, a slight amount of surface rust on the sides of the cylinders, but that looks very, very good. Let's look back up at the valves if we can. There's a view of the valve. Let's go to the next one. This is cylinder number two. This 
one also looks very good. Let's go to the next one. Cylinder number three. So if the engine is stuck, this one is probably the one that's stuck because it's holding this oil in here. So this oil is not able to seep past the cylinder and the piston. Let's go to number four. This one also looks pretty good. The inside of the engine appears to be in good shape, so I'm not concerned about turning the engine over. Next thing to do is to put the car in gear, push it back and forth and see if the engine turns. I'll leave the spark plugs out for now just to make the engine easier to turn while I try to push it and for trying to get the starter to work. I'm going to put the car into gear, then rock it back and forth, seeing if we can get the engine to turn over. Okay, the tires are just skidding on the ground. The engine is not turning, so it's definitely locked up. I'm going to try another gear. The tires are still just skidding on the ground. The engine hasn't turned over at all. You can hand crank these engines to start them. But the way they engage the crankshaft right there is not a very strong coupling. So I think if I tried to use the crank or put a lever on the crank that it will just break the crank or the nut. There is some room though between the bolt on the crankshaft and the radiator. So maybe I can get a socket in there and try to turn the engine over that way. I think that'll be the next safest thing to try. As you can see, I can get a socket on the crankshaft, but there isn't enough room to put the breaker bar onto the socket. And there's not enough room to put the breaker bar on the socket first and then get it in there. So it looks like turning it by the bolt on the crankshaft is not an option. While we're down here though, let's take a quick look underneath. Luckily, this car leaked oil, ended up preserving everything. The wooden floors look in very good shape. Nothing down here looks modified, messed with in any way. It's a very nice looking car. We can get a pretty good look at the wood now here. I think that I need to double check that the generator and the water pump are turning freely because if both of them are frozen up as well as the engine, it's going to be extra hard to get the engine to turn over. So I can easily move the water pump so it's not adding any extra stress. Same with the generator. Generator turns freely. So the only thing keeping this engine from turning over is the engine itself. But these are always good items to check. I have seen both of these items frozen up on cars before. and It wasn't even the engine that was stuck. It was the generator or the water pump. Well, I did my best. I brought the car outside. I thought maybe the higher traction of the parking lot might break it loose, but I just kept bumping it a little bit at a time, skidding it along. And the tires just kept skidding. The engine has not broken loose. It looks like the MGTC has beaten me today. I'm not going to get the engine unseized. But here's the good news. You can help me decide how I'm going to unseize this engine. Whether it's putting some concoction down the cylinders, giving the engine a heat cycle, or trying to turn it mechanically in some manner. So if you want to see the next video with this MGTC, comment below and click subscribe.